In a recent video, we tested several top name brand epoxies to glue together two pieces of steel. The results were quite impressive with JB Weld Original as well as DEVCON coming out on top. With that being said, plastic is far more difficult to glue. It's far more difficult to get a good bond. So, will the JB Weld Original work as well as these other epoxies in front of me that are specifically designed for plastic? So today we're going to be testing JB Weld Original JB Weld's Plastic Bonder, Gorilla, Super Glue Plastic Fusion, and Loctite Super Glue Ultra Gel to determine which one of these epoxies is best for attaching a piece of plastic to a piece of steel. Okay, I consulted an expert in the field of epoxies and they advised me when using plastics to be very careful with what type of uh, uh, solvent I use to clean the surface and they recommend I use isopropyl alcohol instead of using something like acetone because acetone can cause micro fractures in the plastic. I've allowed these epoxies to dry for four days. Also, these are 5 8 inch bolts and four inches in length. I'll begin testing first using the gravitational force. When it comes to applying the weight, I wanna make sure that I apply this weight um, right across the very end of this bolt. And I do not wanna be on the uh, very far inside and I have to apply the weight at exactly the same location because when it comes to applying weight and in, in as far as physics is concerned, even just being off by an eighth of an inch makes a huge difference on the accuracy of this test. We include the count of the chain, this is right at eight pounds. Okay, with the weight of the chain, this is about 11 pounds. The only one left, the only survivor left is J.D. Well. I have to admit, I'm pretty surprised that J.B. Well outperformed these epoxies, which are specifically designed for plastic. According to each one of these products, they're specifically designed for plastic to metal or plastic to wood or plastic to some other substance. So let's take a close look at each one of these to see what caused the failure. Okay, the epoxy did a very good job of sticking to the steel. There's only one small exposed area of steel. About 95% of the epoxy is still on the steel. So the failure occurred from the epoxy not sticking to the plastic surface itself. The epoxy remained on the steel this super glue plastic fusion failed to fuse to the plastic itself. You can see the Gorilla still dangling by a thread of epoxy. And what's very interesting to me is it looked like, it looks to me like the Gorilla sort of failed at both points. It sort of came off of the steel and it came off of the plastic both. So Gorilla just didn't do a very good job of sticking to either surface. JB Well Plastic Bonder actually bonded better to the steel than to the plastic. As you can see, it clearly broke away from the plastic and remained on the steel. JV Weld won this competition by a pretty sizable margin, by over a pound. And so if you look at this, it looks to me as though the JV Weld failed up top, uh, did not stick to the plastic as well as the steel. With that said, it, again, it did a superior job of the other products as far as sticking. The second test we'll be performing includes a twisting motion. So I've got this set at three inch pounds. Again, if we need foot pounds, we'll use a larger torque wrench. What I want to avoid doing is I do not want to uh, cause a lateral force. I do not want to push down. So I'm gonna try to be very careful to hold the weight in a balanced manner with, with my left hand as I'm twisting 
to make sure that I do not cause the failure to occur because of a downward force. 35 inch pounds. Okay, JB Well Plastic Bonded was the first to fail at 35 inch pounds. 40 inch pounds. Okay, Gorilla was the second one to fail at 40 inch pounds. 75 inch pounds. 90 inch pounds. Hundred and ten inch pounds. Hundred and fifteen inch pounds. The Loctite Super Glue Ultra Gel Control held so good that the plastic actually broke before the epoxy did. The Super Glue Plastic Fusion did a pretty good job, but it did not actually fuse to the plastic as much as it did the steel. Gorilla once again sort of failed almost a 50-50. There's still quite a bit of epoxy on the steel, but it also there's some epoxy that's on the plastic bolt itself. JV Weld Plastic Bonder. It stuck to the steel better than it did the plastic, and this, this plastic bonder also failed to um, really compete well against these other epoxies. Okay, about half the epoxy remained on the bolt, and about half the epoxy remained on the steel. Okay, next up is the dead blow test. We all know that anytime you have a plastic glued to something, there's going to be vibration and impact. So what we are measuring here is the ability of the epoxy to withstand a sudden blow. This is extremely important. This is probably the number one reason that most of the projects I use epoxies for, this is the reason they fail. So what we're going to be doing is taking the wrench, we're going to put it over top and beyond the head of the bolt, and we're just going to drop this wrench and allow it to impact 10 times. And on the 10th impact, we're going to move up and wait, and we're going to keep going until each one of these fails. Now each one of these wrenches has a larger diameter hole, and each one of these wrenches weighs more as the wrench gets larger. So I'm going to provide both the size as well as the weight of each of these wrenches, and we're going to progress down through the line and see at what point each one of these fails. This dead blow impact test was very revealing and it demonstrates exactly why you have to match the epoxy with the application. What we noticed was that some of the epoxies that don't have nearly as much strength did an absolute terrific job at managing a dead blow impact because they have more elasticity and less strength. So let's take a look at each one of these and see why they failed. The Loctite Super Glue did a great job of sticking to the steel but failed to stick to the plastic. The Loctite Super Glue is just a very hard uh, glue, just very rigid, and it just will not take any sort of vibration or impact compared to some of the more flexible epoxies. Super Glue Plastic Fusion, again, it's just one of those very, very rigid, hard, inflexible um, epoxies that's just not going to stand up to any sort of vibration. Gorilla did an amazing job in this one category because it is so flexible. If you feel Gorilla glue, it's just not a very hard glue. It stays very rubbery. Okay, JB Weld Plastic Bonder, once again, was disappointing. It's a very hard epoxy that just doesn't seem to stick very well to plastic. I remain very impressed with JB Weld Original because it's not even specifically engineered or designed for plastic, but it tied in first place on this test. And as you can see, it broke free from the plastic and remained glued very well to the metal. Uh, but JB Weld is one of the softer type epoxies when you compare it to like DevCon. So it provides a really good mix between flexibility and strength. 
the, the purpose of these final, um, I wouldn't call it a test, it's more of a demonstration, is just to have a, take a look at how much flexibility this epoxy has before it fails. What I'm going to do is pull this bolt my direction and we're going to just see how far this will flex before it breaks free. You see a lot of flexibility there. It did not take much force at all for that to snap. It just does not have very much strength and doesn't seem to do a very good job ponding. I really learned a lot from these types of projects. And what I learned today was if I need something that has a lot of flexibility, I need to make sure that I choose a soft epoxy or it's going to fail. Even though a hard epoxy may be 10 times stronger, if it's not going to take any sort of vibration or, or movement, it's just going to fail. So. I don't want to tell you which one of these epoxies I think is the best. I really want you to form your own opinion. But, but uh, what I do want to say is I had at least 100 people ask me to do this project. And I just want to say thank you to each and every one of you who watched the video. I really do pay a lot of attention to your comments. I try to reply to as many of these comments as I can within the first or two or three hours after publishing a video. Um, anyway, they, these projects take a lot of money and a lot of time. So I hope I've earned a thumbs up. And you guys also give me some good constructive feedback on how to make these videos better. So I hope you'll leave a comment. I like to interact with you guys. I learn a lot. And just want to say thank you very much for watching the video and look forward to seeing you next time.